this precious faith, then you need to do something. Because you're saved, and that's eternal, but once you're saved, you're never the same. In verse number 5, he says, For this reason, or beside this, we ought to respond this way. He says, giving all diligence, if you look there in your Bibles in verse number 5, and beside this, giving all diligence add to your faith. The word diligence here is the word haste. It's the idea of earnestness or the idea of speed, doing it quickly. What is to follow is not meant to be put on the shelf. It's not, okay, I'll do that when I get around to it. And what follows is this, that you are to add to your faith. Now you say, hold on, Pastor Valiente. You just said that it's only faith in Christ by which we gain entrance into heaven and a relationship with God. Now you're telling me I need to add to my faith. Are you a little bit confused? No, I'm not confused. Although it's still early in the morning, I am not confused. <laughs> you know, I, have, I have problems anytime talking before noon. It's a rough, rough thing for me. But I'm not confused. But let me explain to you what this means and why we are called and what the command to add to our faith is. You say, well, there's nothing that we can add to faith to provide us with a right standing with God, and that's true. If you seek to add anything for the forgiveness of your sins, other than simple faith in Jesus Christ, then we are no longer talking about the same gospel. You have added something to the gospel message. Paul said in the book of Galatians, he made it very clear that adding anything on top of faith, in addition to faith for salvation, for the forgiveness of sins, that by doing that, we pervert the gospel and we have a completely new and a completely different gospel. It creates a completely different and a false gospel. And so it's not a matter of adding to faith alone in Christ for salvation. Everybody with me on that? It's not adding to your faith by adding something extra like going to church or getting baptized or taking communion. It's not adding to your faith in that respect for our salvation, but rather it is this. It is how we presently live out our faith or our relationship with Christ. And that is the question that we're going to ask this morning. Am I living out my faith in Christ? If your faith does not affect your life, then ultimately, according to the book of James, you really don't have a true faith. You remember what James said? He says, faith without works is dead. It is empty. It is vain. It really is no faith at all. And, and that's why we consider this thought that once you're saved, yes, you're always saved. But when a person gets saved, it, it dramatically changes their life. And we'll talk about how that impacts and what that means later on in the message. After having obtained this valuable faith that we saw in verse number one, what are you supposed to do with faith? Like we talked about it last week, it's not something that you can go find. There's no faith compartment in you. There's nowhere that you can go dig and search for faith. So what are you supposed to do with this faith that has been allotted to you? Is it meant to be a ticket that I hold on to? I've got my ticket. I've got the golden ticket. I'm going to heaven. I just hold on to it. I put it in my pocket and I'm good to go, and I'll, I'll see God when I die, and I'll get to go to heaven. Is that what faith is meant to be to us? Is it meant to be put on a shelf and admired? Look at, I have faith. Everybody can come by and, and gaze at it and look at how beautiful it is. From the passage that we will see, our faith is not meant to be a ticket we stick in our back pocket or meant to be put on a shelf for everybody to look at. Our faith is meant to be exercised. It is meant to be worked, and ultimately, it's meant to be worked hard. From the passage, we'll see it is meant to be added onto, or really, it is meant to be built upon. It means that it is supposed to be lived out in our lives. It's not added onto in verse 5 with the idea that our faith is insufficient in some way for salvation. It is faith alone in Christ that saves a man. It is faith alone. You can't add anything to it, your goodness, your works, your church, anything. You add something to that faith alone, and you've got a completely different gospel. So it is faith alone. So our faith is not insufficient. It's not the picture of a lump of clay or some Play-Doh 
that you're kind of taking some more Play-Doh and you're sticking it in and you're adding it to it to make it bigger. It's not that picture of adding to your faith. It's rather the picture of our faith as the foundation for our actions. It's the picture of a building with a foundation that you build the structure on top of. You all understand the difference? It's not adding like a lump of clay. I'm adding some more faith or something to my faith. It's rather my faith is the foundation, and I'm going to build block by block upon that foundation. And so it's not the idea of we're increasing our faith or changing our faith. We are simply building upon the faith that we already have. It's vitally, vitally important in this passage. You notice in verse number 5, it says, add to your faith. It does not say anywhere in this passage, go out and find faith. Or go out and supply faith. Our call is simply to build on top of our faith. It doesn't say add faith. Simply add to the faith you already possess. Without a genuine faith, the structure you build upon that foundation will crumble. But when built upon faith, it will be a strong and a sure building. Remember, our faith was given to us by Lot in verse number 1. Our command is not to create faith. Rather, we are to build ourselves upon and our life upon our most holy faith, Jude 20. So, the logical question is, all right, I need to add to my faith, okay, what am I supposed to add? What are the things that God calls me to build my life upon and to build on top of my faith? That really is the question. You have a relationship with God through Christ through his righteousness, not based on what you do, but you're trusting in Christ alone. And so you've got faith, and your relationship with God should transform your life. Once you're saved, you're always saved, but once you're saved, you're never the same. So we understand those things. What is my life then supposed to look like? Verses 5 through 7 describe what the ultimate transformation or what the makeover will look like in the end. Although it's not going to be the bulk of our message, I want to take some time and I want to describe each of the building blocks that we are to place on top of faith. The first building block you see in verse number 5, it says, And beside this, giving all diligence, all haste and speed, add to your faith, and the first thing there is virtue. Virtue is excellence. It's the same word that was used in verse number 3. Remember at the end of verse 3, we we're called through glory and virtue. It's that same word. It's excellence or praise. As a Christian, it is relatively easy to be virtuous or to do excellently in a certain number of areas of our lives. Sometimes, though, what's really hard is to live virtuously in every area of our lives. I don't know if you're like me, but do you have besetting sins? That means things that keep tripping you up. I mean, you're going along fine. You're thinking you're spiritual, you know, haven't kicked a cat in a week or, you know, you, you've been, you're good. I mean, you're good. I, I never kick a cat, by the way, just let everybody know. But, you know, you, you're good, okay? So you're going along in life and all of a sudden the same thing that messed you up a month earlier is right back again and it trips you up. Does that happen to you? It happens to me. It's frustrating, isn't it? Because these things just keep popping up and that's really the idea of virtue, that I am gaining ground in every area of my life. That there is excellence, holiness, and purity in every, not just the areas I'm naturally good at. You know, I don't have a really volatile temper, generally. Sarah may have a different story, but I don't think. I don't really have, you know, I don't, I don't throw things against walls, generally. I, I, so, you know what, I could look at my life and say, you know what, I'm a good guy. Man, look at me. I, I do so well in that area. Look how great. But then I'd be ignoring all these areas over here where I'm not so good. And it's easy in our Christian lives to look at, well, I'm doing well over here and ignore the struggles and the major sin areas over here. Virtue means I'm dealing with them all. I'm taking care of each and every aspect. Sometimes we write off sins. Well, you know, that's, that's the way my dad used to talk. So I, just, I grew up hearing it. That's how I talk. Or, you know, that's just my personality. I, I get angry. I've always, I've always been angry. I've always been an angry person. That's, I, that's just me. You know, that's, that's how I am. Or, you know, that's the kind of stuff I grew up watching. 
you know, I, I grew up looking at that stuff. So, you know, you know, why would I stop now? Understand that simply because we're predisposed to do something.